of life. The winning keys of life. The winning keys of life. Life is a battle. Life is a battlefield. Those who mistake it for a trumpet, they are the ones that end up becoming the prisoners of war. Or in most cases, they turn to casualties of war. Some people think it's a fun fair. It's not a fun fair, but it is a warm fair. And a fight you refuse to fight, you will ever need to fight again. A fight you are ready to fight is a fight you are going to win. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 to 5. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 to 5. Say, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after flesh. Though we dwell as human beings, but we do not war after flesh. We are not fighting with human beings. We are not combating war of flesh and flesh. But our war is of the spirit, is of the world spirit. For for the weapons of our weapon, they are not carnal, but mighty to God to the pulling down of strongholds. To the pulling down of strongholds, not all strongholds are bad. Because as human beings, we are created to hold on to something. Listen to me. Not all struggles are bad because we are created as human beings to hold on to something. Our problem comes when we begin to hold on to the wrong things. I traveled to Imo State and a sister was discussing with a fellow sister. Members of Bible believing church. And then we are analyzing a concept called Osu. And I became interested because I grew up here in River State. I don't know what they mean by those that are Osu. That's outcast. It was a time of trying to say that Osu people are those outcast people that their forefathers committed a sacrilege, okay, or a taboo in the land. And they call them an outcast, the man and the wife. For over 400 years, they keep multiplying. And now, because the man committed a sacrilege for over 400 years, now the children are also partakers of the sin. I said, what about if the person is born again? He said, born again doesn't count on this one. Room. That even if they are born again, in as much as they belong to those who they men. I said, do you think that if the person is born again, and I want to marry you as a lady, you will not accept the same God for me. I was very cautious. Because these ones are born again children of God. But they have this mentality that because those people are also, even if they are born again, they cannot have anything to do with them. It is a stronghold. It is a belief system that has come to shape the way they think. And this kind of belief system can cause a psychological problem to themselves and to others. You see, they have all of the wrong belief system. That is the stronghold we are talking about. Five, casting down the imagination. And every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. And bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. You see that? Bringing into captivity whatsoever. That I have risen itself against the knowledge of who God bring it into subjection. All these thought patterns, subjecting them to the knowledge of God, using the light of God to size everything. That's what you're talking about here. Everyone working on this earth is working and is worrying. Whether he is conscious of it or not, it does not matter. The truth of the matter is that if you are here on earth, you are preaching as a child of God, you are fighting an invisible fight. Why? A great door is open, but there are many what? Adversary. There are many forces that people want you to get what the Lord wants you. Your inheritance in Christ is being contested by powers of war, darkness. That is why we must put up a fight. There is a constant battle over your life, whether you believe it or not. That is just the truth. First John chapter five, verse four to eight. First John chapter five, verse four to eight. First John five, four to eight. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. 
And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our world, faith. Whatsoever that is born of God overcometh the world, the world. He did not say whatsoever that is born of God will not face the fight. No, you will face it, but you must surely the world overcome. Church, are we talking? Five. Who is he that overcometh the world? For he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. This is he that, that this is he that fed by water and blood, and it is and it is the spirit that bears witness because the spirit is true. Seven. For there are three that bear witness in heaven: the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. Eight. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casted out fear because fear has torment. Fear has what? Torment. Fear torments its victims because no fear in love. And children of love that we are with are not supposed to dwell in fear. For whatsoever that is born of God overcometh the world. And that victory is our faith. He said, above all, putting on the shield of faith. Our faith is what mesmerizes the world, the devil. That puts the devil where it belongs, our faith. So you pray, have registered you into overcomer's family. Redemption has registered you into overcomer's world family. When you are born of God, you are born to win and to triumph and to overcome. So you must try to locate what makes you win. You must try to locate what makes you win. Not just to say, I am an overcomer. You must sit down and find out those things and follow the steps of the things that makes you work an overcomer. Church, am I talking? Yes, sir. There is no more negotiation of your victory with the devil. Every child of God is born to win. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor. Neighbor. I am born to win. I am born to win. So, Say, neighbor. Neighbor. Do you know, you know that we are born to win? Of course we are born to win by redemption. New birth does not exempt you from the battle. It is only a guarantee for your victory. It guarantees your world victory. Even Jesus said, The priest of this world has come to me, but have nothing against me. John 14 30. John 14 30. The priest of this world has come to me. Know the priest of this world has to come. Yes. Because Jesus also had the experiences just as we had them. Now the priests of the world, they have come, but they have nothing against me. But they came. Our home is a place of rest. Heaven, our home, is a place of rest. And a garden for all who have come out in Christ. It's a place of rest. A garden of those that have overcome. Fighters who won the battles of life are those who end up in heaven. So heaven is a home of fighters, spiritual fighters. Revelation chapter 2, verse 7, 11, 17, and 26. Revelation 7, 11, 17, and 26. 7 said, He that hath an ear, let him do what? Hear what the Spirit said unto the churches. To him that overcometh, will I give to eat the tree of life which is in the midst of the paradise of God. 11. He that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit has said unto the church. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. 17. He that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said to the churches. To him that have overcometh, will I give to him of the hidden manna, and will give him a white stone, and in the stone new name written, which no man knoweth, saving he that received it. 26. And he that overcometh, and keep my works until the end, to him will I give power over the nations. Look at that. He that overcometh. This suggests that we are the ones that will fight for our victory to the end. He that overcometh. It means we are the ones that must fight for our world victory. And we must fight it to the end. He that overcometh to the world end. Not he that overcometh halfway. Most persons overcame. But before you know it, the things which that overcame, you begin to overcome them. 
that will not be your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Revelation chapter 3, verse 5, verse 12, and verse 21. 5 said, He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in the white ram, and I will not put out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. 12. He that overcometh will have a pillar in the temple of my God. And shall and he shall go out no more, go no more out. And I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from God. And I will write upon him a new name. 21. To so him that overcometh, will I give grant seat with me in my throne, even as I overcome, and I am. And I am sat down with my father on the throne. You see that he that overcometh, Jesus also overcometh. Praise the Lord. Even as I have overcome, he that overcometh, even as I, Jesus, have overcome. There is no anointing or authority that exempts you from the battle of life. No type of anointing you get. No type of calling, whether pastor or bishop or archbishop or a prophet or prophet, that accepts you from this fight. You must fight it. You must do what? Fight it. And Paul told Timothy, fight the good fight of what? Faith. Hold on. Hold on to eternal life until which you have been professed among many world witnesses. So life is a battlefield. The war is a, the war and its system is a survival of the fittest. In the war, it's a matter of how many native doctors you know and how many court groups you belong to, how many uncle centers. If your neighbor know native doctor more than you or have mystical power more than you begin to rule you, that is what is happening in the kingdom of the war. Are you getting what I'm saying? Who belong to social cult group and social group? And if the group is the one that is ruling, and your own group is not ruling, it means that one that is ruling will subject you. That's what it means. That is what is happening in the kingdom of darkness. The harmonies you know, if it's stronger than the one the other person know, it begins to take off it. But for the redeem of the Lord, it is a triumphant life of faith, a triumphant life of what? Faith. Standing on the word of faith is crucial for actualizing your destiny. Standing on the word of faith is vital for actualizing your inheritance in Christ. Church, am I talking? Yes, sir. Life is a warfare. But for every child of God, you are already destined to win. Jesus has brought the victory for us all. All that is required for you to do is to know how to appropriate that victory in a battle. How to appropriate your victory. How to use your victory right. How to use your kingdom keys. How to use the name of Jesus to win. That is all that is needed for you. That is all. John 16, 33. John 16, 33. These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer because I have overcome the world. You see that? In Jesus you will have peace. But in the world you will have troubles. You will have problems. There are a lot of troubles and persecutions and all the rest of them in the world. But our peace comes from God. Say, be in a good world, cheer. Be in a merry mood. Be in a happy mood. Be happy, be cheerful. Why? Because Jesus has overcome the world. Understanding of the weapons of your enemy will help you to know how to deal with them. Understanding of the weapons of your enemy will make you know how to handle the enemy. We are talking about Satan the devil. If you are to challenge somebody in a football match, either Nigeria and Gabon, or Nigeria with Costa Rica, what do you do? Nigeria will begin to watch their previous matches and begin to know who is the danger man there. Is it not true? Hello, church, am I talking? Yes, we begin to know who am I going to cage? Who am I going to mark up? And that is the same thing. If you are to fight a war or challenge someone in a wrestling match, you are beginning to watch his previous fight. For you to defeat the devil, you must be careful to know the tactics of the devil so that you know how to counteract him. Very important. 
So understanding the strategy of your aim is part of the requirement that will help you in this battle of life. So, what is the weapon at the enemy disposal? That is the question. So, what are these weapons at the enemy's disposal? You know, Peter had a destiny for the church of Jesus Christ. When the Lord said unto him, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will be my church. And the gates of it shall not all prevail. Peter had a glorious destiny. When the Lord asked him, What do men think I am? Everybody in the same, okay. First of all, they ask them, What do you think men think that I am? They say, John the Baptist, they say, One of the prophets, and the rest. And Jesus now looked at them, eyeball to eyeball. Who do you say I am? Who do you say? And there was a kind of silence. And Peter raised up his hand. He said, You are the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of the living God. He said, This is not just a statement, but a revelation, but a revelation. And upon this revelation, I will build my church. He said, Upon this rock, that is a rock of revelation. Upon this revelation, upon this revealed knowledge, upon this knowledge that is not from man, upon this heavenly revelation, I will be my God. So the church of Jesus is built upon revelation. It's built upon what? Church am I talking? Christ is that revelation. The anointing. Upon this anointing, I will be my church. And gates, not gates, gates of hell. No matter how numerous they are, they will never prevail against the church. And you know one thing, the church is not the building, you are the church. Say, I hear. So no gate of hell can stop you. Amen. Say, I know who I am. I, I am the church. I am the and no gate of hell shall prevail against me. It cannot. Nothing can stop you. You are unstoppable. That's what it means. You see that? That's the destiny of triumphants. And Satan said, let us see how it works. Because Peter already had a glorious destiny. And devil Matthew, devil said, let us see how it works. Luke chapter 22, verse 31 to 32. Luke 22, verse 31 to 32. That one said, and the Lord said, Uncle Simeon, Simeon, behold, Satan had desired to have you, that he may seek you as a we. 32. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail thee not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. He said, Satan has desired you. Because Satan is after destinies. Satan is looking for a life to waste. Why? Because that is the world of the devil. He is coming to kill, he is coming to steal, he is coming to do what? Destroy. Jesus said, I have come to restore your destiny. To give you life in the excess. To give you an eden kind of life. That is what Jesus has come. And he came and have repositioned Peter. I have prayed for you that your faith faith not. When you are strong, strengthen others. I have already prayed for you. And Judas is coward. The same Satan came and pushed him out. But for Peter, Peter was highly rehearsed. Re- the Lord brought him back. He was rehearsed. And he was brought back. And he became a strengthener to those that are weak. Church, are you getting what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Amen. Uh, Matthew 7. Verse 24 to 27. Matthew 7, 24 to 27, 24 said, Wherefore, whosoever heareth this saying of mine, and dwell them, I will liken him unto a wise man, which builded his house upon a rock. 25. And the rain descended, and the fall came, and the wind blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, but it was founded on a rock. Is it like that in your Bible? 26. And everyone that hear any sense of mine and do it then, not shall be like it unto a fool man, a foolish man, a foolish man, which build his house upon a sand. 27. And the rain descended, and the fog came, and the wind blew, and beat upon that house, and he fell. And great was the fall. The wind blew. See that? Because the house had no foundation. And when the rain fell, and the wind blew, and the wind blew up the house, blew up the house. 
So, among the people of the enemy, in the evil with in the world, in the world, in the world, the Lord. The Bible called Satan the prince of the power of earth in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2. So, one of the weapons of the enemy is his evil me, is his evil work me. When he blows this one, if your outcome is not strong, he will blow you off. Satan used his power over the wind in fighting believers, in fighting the curse. Now, listen to this. Since Satan attacked with spiritual wind, you will need to develop a spiritual heavyweight. You need to do what? Develop a spiritual heavyweight. You know? If you put a pillar or a rod in front of a can, it cannot pull it out. Is it not true? But when you put a piece of paper in front of a fan, what will happen? It will blow it up. No matter the prayer you pray. Because the paper don't have weight. So for you to sustain this wind, you must have spiritual stamina. You must have spiritual world stamina. So we shall be studying what to do to have this spiritual stamina so that we can withstand the wind of the devil. This heavy wind will help you to combat Satan's wind. Jesus says, Senior, Senior, Satan is coming with his heavy wind to blow you up, but I have prayed for you. I have prayed for you that you do not faint. When the wind blows, you will not faint. And that is my prayer. That as the wind of the devil is blowing, because the wind will blow, that you will not faint in the name of Jesus. Amen. Listen to this. Don't fail. People don't fail exam because they don't know anything. They fail exam because they don't know enough. Praise the Lord. There is somebody that is sitting for exam that don't know anything. The issue is that they fail because what they know is not enough to give them the required work scores. What you know is what determines where you are now. It is the information at your disposal that is what is keeping you now. I am not a professor. Why? Because the information the professor has, I don't have it. I hear my say, so it's all about the information about the work of God at your disposal. That is what determines the level of Christianity you are operating on. I don't need to get what I say. And until you know better, you won't live where you are. Until you understand better, you won't live where you are. There is no type of prayer that you will pray for a tiny paper standing before a standing fan, not to be blown away. No prayer. So prayer is not everything. Praise it the Lord. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. Prayer is not a substitute for spiritual weight. It's not a substitute. All you need to do is to develop or build up your spiritual weight so that you will be at rest. No matter the nature of the Satan's wind, you must develop spiritual stamina. Developing your spiritual stamina is what makes you to be at rest. When the devil is always going to say, Am I talking? Yes, sir. The problem with believers of today is that there are so many charismatic colors without spiritual weight to resist Satan's wind. There are so much charismatic color, you know. The charism is high, but no spiritual weight. And that is why they will keep growing them. There are so many kinds of head type, so many kinds of big Bible, so many speaking in tongues, so many, you know, acrobatic display or spiritual whatever. That what makes it work is not in you. So it's not a shock to do. When the wind comes, it will blow you. Unless you develop spiritual muscles. That's what they're talking about. So, what are the requirements for building your spiritual muscle? What are the requirements for this weight building? How do we build our spiritual weight? Number one, you must have quality nutrition. You must have quality work nutrition. You must feed your spirit the same way you feed your flesh. You see how most of you are shining because you are eating well. Whatsoever happens to you, shawarma, you eat. Pizza, you eat. And okay, you are there. 
you know how to cook banana dye to nourish your body and use nice cream. Go to Shalom, beautify yourself. That is how you should feed your inner mind. Praise the Lord. Amen. You must eat balanced spiritual diet. You must eat what? Balanced spiritual diet. All these weight lifters you see, they don't eat junk. They eat quality food. You may be eating, yet what they are eating is junk. It's not every food that is palatable. A palatable food, spiritual palatable, is like the one you are eating this morning. Praise the Lord. Amen. Church, are you getting what I'm saying? If, if you are not feeling well in the spirit, you will become spiritual or shock up this day. There are many shock up believers in the body of Christ. And that is why when Satan will come, they don't understand it. So many persons feel it, but they are eating rubbish. They are eating food that is not well balanced. And spiritually, they are nothing. They are empty. Empty concord making highest words. Once of them said, my pastor said, hallelujah, my pastor said, hey, no, 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 no. my pastor said, hey. I said, what did your pastor say? What of them said, my pastor can preach your head, you don't know him or head. He said, I said, but what did your pastor preach? And you can't say one thing out of the many things that your pastor said, but my pastor, hey, you don't know him or head, hallelujah, hey, my pastor can say, hey, praise the Lord, hey, my pastor can say, hey, 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 my pastor can pray, hey, I am the Lord, I am the Lord, I am the Lord, Blah, 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 blah. It's not a substitute for the word of God. Bless it, Lord. Church, I hear what say? Yes, Talking in tongues is a registration. It's not the school of power. It's not the power itself. That you can talk in tongues for 10 years, for 5 months, hour for 7, does not make you anything. It's just a mere registration. It's the school of power. It's not the power that it is itself. So it is the amount of God that is in you, amount of the word of God that is in you, that makes the difference. Like I said, the only difference between me now and the medical doctor is the information. So I tell you, yes, there are informations you get in here that will make you a, a great champion. There are information available for you for that problem to you know have a solution until you get that right there information. Naturally, restaurants don't eat junk food. They eat quality food to make their body fit for the fight. You need to feed your spirit with quality food to build your spiritual way. God's word is the living bread. Is the living word bread? Praise the Lord. God's word is the living bread from what? From heaven. God's word, the living bread from heaven. God's word is the living bread from heaven. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Is the living bread from heaven. God's word is the living bread from heaven. It's the living bread from heaven that a man may eat and not die. God's word conveys spiritual nutrition into your system. God's word conveys spiritual nutrition into the world system. So our human nature is exchanged for his divine nature, confining of us divine authority. I take it again. Our human nature is exchanged for his divine nature, confining of us divine authority. Second Peter 1 4. Second Peter 1 4 says, Whereby I give it unto us a city great and precious promise. That by this ye may be partaker of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption, now is in the loss. You see? So your weight is not determined by your noise. Your spiritual weight is not determined by your noise making. Your weight has to be determined by the word of God inside of you. By the amount of the word of God inside of uh, you, know, 2 Timothy 2:15. 2 Timothy 2 15. He says, Study to show that self approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the world of truth. Everybody say, Study. Study. Shout, he says, Study. Study. Say, I must study. I must study. You know, he says, Study to show yourself approved. Some of you little questions they ask you, you have been thrown off balance. You just go there, they are calling back outside that you are lost. Why? Because you are not a student of the Bible. It's a story, not just story, to show yourself approved. A workman that needed not to keep on rightly dividing 
the word of truth. And that is what it takes. This is the feeding system in building your spiritual way. You are feeding mechanism in building your spiritual way. There are a difference between reading and studying. When you read, you are reading God of God like you are studying means you are taking time to digest what you are reading, internalizing them, allowing them to get into your spirit, allowing them to go into your spirit. You can't be studying without taking note of what you are studying or discovering. You must make up notes, you must make up what notes of what you are studying, taking vital points, point by point of what it was study or reading. Proverbs chapter 24 verse 13 to 14. Proverbs 24 verse 13 to 14. My son, eat the honey because it is good. And the honey cup which is great, which is sweet to thy taste. My son, eat the honey because it is good. And the honey cup which is sweet to thy taste. 14. So shall the knowledge of the world be unto thy soul. When thou hast found it, then there shall be a reward. And thy expectation shall never be called short. Thy expectation shall never be called called short. When you find it, there shall be a reward. Because your expectation shall never be called short. It is your finding, listen to this, it is your finding that determines the happiness in your life. You are discovering. Is what determines what happens in your life. If you don't want to be a victim of, of war, become a committed finder. If you don't want to be a victim of war, become a committed finder, a discoverer from the world. Because it is what you know that determines where you are. It is what you know that build up your spiritual stamina. Church, am I talking? Yes, sir. Every family you make, set the pace for the happiness in your life. Everything God said to you is a responsibility placed in your hand. If you make no finding, you go nowhere. God called me a, to be a pastor. But the way I am discovering, I am finding, it's up to me. So many that started with me, you know they used to have of they have all abandoned the world. Why? Most of them did not discover what it takes to reach there. Praise the Lord. It is in your hand to discover what puts you there. Because there will be will, there will be what? Will. So you must know what it takes to counter the winds. The winds are different. Your wind and my wind may not be the same. Your attack and my own may not be the same, but God has given a way of escape in every attack that is coming. Church, am I talking? Yes, sir. Church, am I talking? Yes, sir. If you are here, say, I am here. I am here. Don't sit down and say, I know God will do it. God has already done it because he has played his part. We need to, we need to be spiritually well conscious in the battle of life. We must be spiritually well conscious in the battle of life. Paul said, I know you might believe it. I know him. And Jesus said, if I say I don't know him, I will be a liar like you. 2 Timothy 1, 7, 1 verse 12. 2 Timothy 1, 12. For the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know who I have believed. I, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Unto him against that day. I am committed to that which I have committed. Because I know him. I know him. He will surely play his own part. I am committed because I know him. John 7. 28 to 29, John 7 to 8 to 9. Then Jesus cried in the temple as he thought, saying, Ye both know me, and ye know where I am. And I am not come of myself, but he that sent me is true. Whom ye know not, 29, but I know him, for I am from him, and he hath sent me. I know him, I am from him, and he has sent me. We must increase deeper knowledge of Christ. We must increase deeper knowledge of Christ so that we
we can work with divine authority to deal with the devil. We must have deep knowledge, deep knowledge of Christ. Otherwise, a shallow knowledge of him will throw us all balance. And Paul said that I may know him and the power of his word, resolution. That I may know him. So you keep knowing him. Knowing him is weakness. So now that you are pretty, you will get to know more. Because revelation of him is the key. Say, I hear. I hear. John Chapman Yes, sir. Number two, which is the last, you are to practice the world. You are to practice the world. You must feed yourself with the world. Number two, you are to practice the world. Not just becoming a hearer. But a doer. You must have the practical aspect of the world. Not just to hear, but to do it. The practice of the world enhances our spiritual weight. It is not just making findings, but appropriating the findings. Okay? Appropriating the findings you have made to a lifestyle that makes a difference. Putting what you have studied into practice. This is where the charismatics of today have problems in their belief system. They have so much revelation, but no application. Revelation without application is tantamount to destruction. Revelation without application. The Lord has revealed it. Have you applied it? If God said, do this, and you don't do it, you are like one that has had nothing for him. They have such revelation, but no application. They say there's plenty of quotation, but no traceable application. And this is where the first frustration. This is where the first frustration. There are some persons that can quote 30 scriptures, but they can't even apply one. That you can quote it, and you can't apply it. It means you don't know it. Praise the Lord. Second Corinthians 10, 5. Cast it down imagination. And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And bring it into captivity. Every thought of the obedience of Christ. So it is the level of your obedience that determines the level of your command. The level of your obedience is what determines the level of your word command. If they shall obey, if they shall obey, they will eat the good of the land. You see that? Why we are not eating the good of the land? Because we are not working in war with it. Oh, did they put you in command? Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, do you know that your obedience to the law is what puts you in command? I thought you said a big event to that. Imagine the preacher of prosperity who is not a celebrated giver. He will be a poor man. Prosperity, prosperity, that you are not a practitioner of prosperity. Then it will work. You are not a giver. You are not just want to receive from people. But you think it doesn't work that way. Hello. Hi. Have a regular spiritual exercise. Have a regular spiritual exercise. Jude 1 verse 20. But yet the Lord, build it up yourself. On your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Praying in the Holy Ghost. 1 Timothy 4, verse 6 to 7. 1 Timothy 4, verse 6 to 7. 6. If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, for thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the world of faith and of good doctrine, whereunto thou hast attained seven. Refuse profane and all well fields and exercise themselves rather unto godliness. Spiritual exercise is the requirement for our spiritual work. Spiritual exercises which involve fasting and prayer, which involve tongue speaking, which involve Indian Bible studies, spiritual exercise which involves all night. These are few of the spiritual exercises that you see all. We engage in prayer, we engage in fasting, we engage in praying in the Holy Spirit to build up ourselves. There is a path to going on in our life, but our victory is guaranteed. Our triumph into the battle of life is rooted in the working knowledge of truth. Hebrews 1 3. Hebrews 1 3. Hebrews 1 3. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upon the by the word of the power, when he 
we have by itself point our sins. Stand on the right hand of the majesty of her. You see that? The battle of your head, your children, your career, it is it. God has already opposed it by the power of his mouth. By the power of his word. He has already opposed it. So the knowledge of his truth is the key to the world of victory. The knowledge of his truth is the key to your victory in the battle of life. Listen to this. If you don't have the word of God, you can't give it out. If you don't have the word of God, you can't give it out like a Sanghidina. Because it is the word you know that you are able to give it out. A man cannot give us what he don't have. Can he? No. Therefore, sit down and get the working knowledge of the truth. And pay the price to get it. Because the first thing you make determines the happening in your life. It is the first thing that you make that determines the happening in your world life. Spiritual understanding is the poster of your faith. Spiritual understanding is what boosts your world faith. Church, are you talking? You can't understand a thing and still doubt it. You can't have the understanding of anything and still doubt it. When you understand it, you supernaturally believe it. And when you believe it, you actually become it. Wonderful. Wonderful. You know it. You act. You believe. You become. Wonderful. May prayer this morning is that Almighty God will strengthen you. Amen. The study enhances your spiritual faith and enhances your victory in life. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. And lift up your hands to heaven.